what happened between like 9 and 9.30? What kind of happened? Can you set it up a little bit? Well, between 9 and 9.30, we were waiting out uh, in the hallway on, on some chairs uh, outside the courtroom uh, for other cases that were being heard at the time that were kind of going over their time. We were scheduled to begin at 9, but we had to wait for other cases to, to finish up. Okay. When you had to wait for other cases to finish up, what time were you summoned to appear? We were summoned to appear for 9 o'clock. Wow. Um, so what – yeah, what 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 – if you were summoned to appear, what you said, somebody else was summoned to appear at eight o'clock or eight thirty. Well, we assumed that they must have had to start there for eight thirty, quarter to nine, maybe, um, and they must have gone over. Uh, and yeah. They recessed, and instead of taking us back, they didn't. They they just finished their case, so they recessed and then took their case back into court, and then it went on until about eleven o'clock or so before we got in there. Okay, so now does it make a little bit of sense why I say, you know what, just put it down for a couple of hours. That's right. So that way you could say, hey, does any, did anybody come to this courtroom between 9 and 11? We're just walking in here at 9. You know, we would reserve the room for 9. But obviously, you know, somebody's, uh, you know, discourteous and, you know, courteous, you know, discourteous, and they believe that they um, could occupy this room when we had it reserved for us at 9 o'clock. So it's like somebody had a, at the clerk or court's office felt that they could be disrespectful and they could um, and they schedule two parties to be at the same dance at the same time. Like we were all dressed up here to go to, you know, our formal dance, and uh, she had scheduled this courtroom for somebody else at the same time. That's, like, really discourteous. So, uh, but anyway, like I said, you make it go for three hours then. We can make it go all day. It doesn't really matter. You say, you know, I'll make it from, not, you know, 9 o'clock till 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. I don't care. Anybody comes into this room, you know, with a claim, let us know. And you just, you know, that's how you hold court. That's that's actually called like holding court. You're holding court. You're waiting for claims to come in. That's that's holding court. You're considering that venue your place of business. It's your courtyard. Or like I said, you know, like when you you know, just like I'm sure you folks have courtyards up there in Canada where uh, you know they have like a coffee you know club over here, and you walk across, you got a bookstore. You know, it's a court. Right. And everybody conducts business there. That's all you're doing. You're conducting business in this public building, not a private building. It's a public building. So um, you get into there at 11 o'clock. Did you explain to them that, hey, um, we had a claim here, we had a claims uh, going to be submitted here between 9 and 9.30? Did you bring that up or not? No, I didn't bring that up. Okay. Do you understand why it's really important to bring it up? Uh, you might have to go back over that with me. Okay. Well, it's really important to bring it up because that's the only business that you had in that venue inside of that public building that day. You had nothing else to talk about. That's all you wanted to do was accept claims that day at that time and get out of there. That's all you wanted to do. And all you wanted to do is get somebody who is assigned by the court clerk's office, some guy in a black robe. It could be it could be the bookkeeper. Now, I don't care if he's the accountant and, and he's just assigned to be there that day as a witness. So when you create your order, you create your order like I, you know, Jesse, da, 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 da. Uh, as no, you know, person came forth on this court on this day, you know, from 9 o'clock to, you know, 12 o'clock to make a claim, I ordered the immediate return of said property, see attached to Exhibit A or whatever. Or you could actually put it in the order, the actual name of your property. I demand the immediate, and you can make four orders. One kid, two kids, three kids, four kids. That's fine. I return the name of Baby Joe, Baby Billy, Baby Bob, you know. You can say, and then make it four. So that way, when you give it to the sheriff's department, he'll go find each kid in case they separated him and put them in multiple locations. Right. And make each separate order. That's fine. And then what you do when you make your order, you, you sign your name. You put your thumbprint on it. That's fine. That's cool. And underneath it, you put witness. And then that guy in the black robe would witness it. And then underneath it, you write on your order, clerk court or court clerk. And that's it. And then she would sign her name, the witness would sign it, the court clerk would sign it, they'd put the seal on it, and now you have an order in which you could go down to the sheriff's department and have them execute it on your behalf, or you could stick it on your mantle and never do nothing. But now you at least have your order, you have your judgment. And, and the order's been, you know, you know, acknowledged as a legitimate order. So now you could actually have it go executed if you want. If you don't want to execute it, don't execute it. You know, it's up to you. So, um, so, like you said, 11 o'clock, things started. How did it start? Like, what went on? Uh, well, it began first off by the judge addressing the uh, Minister of Social Development's application first. Uh, 
uh, instead of our case first. What was the application? Uh, the application is for custody of our children for six months, uh, even though they've already had them for four and a half. So they wanted for an additional. They wanted them for an additional six months. For an additional six months, and now they're trying to go for permanent custody. Right, but this one that day was for six months, right? That's right. Okay, so what did what what did you do when they started talking? When oh, let me try to remember this now. When they started, when they started talking. Uh, first, okay, well, first the judge said what they were there for. They were there for the matter of the, the Minister of Social Development's application um, and checking to make sure uh, what if there were any preliminary issues for the, the trial and whatnot, and we're checking to see if all the parties were there. So they went through, and once they came to us, um, we didn't confirm our, our name as he requested. We simply stated that we were there as a man and woman presenting our ourselves in, our, in case for the court. Right. And uh, that's when he kind of jumped down my throat right away. And uh, basically, I asked you a question, and you're going to answer me the way I, you know, I asked you, and, and uh, you know, this is my courtroom, and blah blah. And just, and then I looked at him and I said, well, "Why are you intimidating me?" Very just matter of factly and very sweetly. And, uh, and then he just kind of calmed down and. and he, yeah, because it's all on the record, I guess. And and uh, he said, well, are you, are you not, you know, just at Arsenal? And I said, well, I am a woman here presenting myself in case for the court. So he finally just basically gave up and, and big roll the eyes and the sigh, and sat back in his chair, looked at us, and then just decided to proceed with the other party. Can you still kind of see why it's going on the way it's going? Can, can you tell everybody why so I don't have to tell them? <laughs> well... First off, um, I disobeyed my own court rules, so uh, I, I'm in contempt of my own court already because I'm there past the time I'm supposed to be. So it technically wasn't our court anymore. It was his court. Uh, so he was making the decisions then at that point. And, and, uh, uh, so you, so what, what I'm trying to say is um, what's happening is, you did one, you just wanted to establish court to accept claims. Other than that, there was no other business for you. There was no other business for court that day, as far as you were concerned. There was no business for the Arsenal court that day. Anything else was moot. It, moot. it didn't matter. It, 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 it had nothing to do with you. That's right. Yeah, less what these people are talking about, you couldn't care less. What? Six months they want, six years, 60 years, you know, they're just trying to do it to intimidate you and scare you and shake you off your claim. They're trying to get you to understand you better start playing ball or you can kiss these kids goodbye. Did you kind of feel more that way? It's like we were trying to intimidate you. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so that's a good, well, so I'm pretty accurate of what I, like I said, so you could definitely tell, oh, Carl, you've definitely been to family court before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, because they, they, the social workers and whatnot won't even talk to us anymore. They, they've right. got the big hate on for us, and, and, uh. But they yeah. won't talk to you anymore. No, they, they, they won't let us see the, the kids at all. They, you know, we, they won't answer our phone calls or anything like that. They, they, can, they, they can see a lawsuit is coming. They, there's no doubt about it. When, yeah. And when I know a lawsuit is coming, they'll tell everybody, don't say a damn word to these people. Everything you say will be used against you, and you will, they, these people will take your social service pensions and your bank accounts, and they will gone is your paycheck, and there's nothing the court could do to stop these people from suing you individually in your individual capacities. Don't say anything to these people. You have an attorney that represents social services. Let the attorney do all the speaking for every single person in this social service organization. You see why they're clamming up? It's not because they're clamming up because they don't like you. They're told, you shut your mouth or this lady's going to own you. Right. Okay, that's what's really going on. Not whatever you think might be going on. That's what's really going on. They're now being warned. You're going to be sued. You're going to lose everything. You better just let us take care of this because these people are going to win. So now everybody's just told to shut up. Don't testify. Don't do anything. Don't take no witness stand. Don't do anything. So now what's the other thing that you really missed that's really important? you realize why they did what they did to you? <laughs> I, I, I'm trying hard to think about that. Um, you said it earlier, believe it or not. Did I already say it? <laughs> said it a little earlier. Why did they treat you the very first hearing? Why did they not respect you when you were talking? Why did they oh, tell you? 
Well, because, well, first of all, we talked too much. And uh, second of all, they didn't understand anything we were saying. They, we were just confusing the crap out of them. The reason why they can't recognize you is because you haven't made a claim yet. You have no case before the court. You still, to this day, have no case before the court. They can't see you in your capacity in which you wish to stand. They still see you according to the social services or Canadian rules or whatever. That's right. right. You have to file a claim. You have to get your own case in there, your own suitcase with your own claim, with your own accoutrements, with your own witnesses, with your own exhibits, and you need to make your own claim and drag and define what the social service thing is and drag it into your case. See, right now they believe that they got they are the controlling party. Of course they wrote the rules for them to win. That's right. So now you you gotta write your rules for them to lose. And there you go. And then that's when you get it up to the jury. And then the jury will determine whose rules work for them. To the jury. Not for you, not for them, not according to any constitution, not according to any bill of rights. The jury can throw is them to it all out. And they're going to determine whose rules does the society like. And that's why I warn you. You might get a jury who will say, you know what, you guys are a bunch of wackadoos. And you know what, I'm glad social services took your kids because I'll take them too. So that's why you got to be careful sometimes when you ask for a jury. Honestly, it's actually better to go before a black robe one when it comes to something like this because the trump card is the common law. The trump card is the claim over the complaint. So if you have a claim that you won the lottery, and you go to the lottery commission, the lottery control board, and you say, look, I got the claim ticket I won, you're going to get the cash right there. If, you, if you're going in and saying, well, I'm a woman, gay, in a wheelchair, and uh, um, I'm Hispanic or black or oriental, and I'm Buddhist, or you, you discriminated against me from winning the lottery, so I'm going to file a complaint that only white people seem to be winning the lottery up here in Canada, your complaint is basically going to be falling on deaf ears because everybody says you're ridiculous. That, that's not the rules of the lottery. What do you want us to do for you? Well, you just gave it to that white lady over there, a lottery winnings. I want to because she brought a claim. She had a claim. You have a complaint. Well, you know, what are we going to bring? Everybody who lost the lottery this week, we're going to pay them too? So see what I'm trying to say? When you have a claim, they understand that trumps the state's complaints. If you're going to say that's a complaint, if we lived in France, you'd lose. Because they, they, that's just the way they work. It's on the Napoleonic Code. We got lucky, and some great reason, our great grandfather somewhere in the past decided, you know what, this is going to be common law. Because we don't trust the people who write the codes. We don't trust the people who write the laws. We just don't trust them. Because they're usually lawyers and guys who went to college and know how to wrangle words. So you know what, the guys who are actually are competent to read and write, they always try to figure out a way how to uh, get over on the common people who don't know how to read and write. So the next thing will be enslaved to these people who write the codes. So that's why in this country, and that part of Canada as well, also believes the same thing, that uh, our grandparents were wise enough to say, you know what, um, even the people who can't read or write, they have just as much right to claim property as a guy who could wrangle the words and, uh, you know, talk, you know, snappy in court. As long as a man comes up with a claim, you know what, it doesn't matter how well he reads it right. We're still going to give the guy his day in court. So thank God our forefathers decided to do it that way. Okay. So what, what else would you like to add in from there? Do you have anything you'd like to add in there? Well, at this point, we are we haven't given up. Now we've got our, our, our claim that we're preparing. It's still just the, going to be the one page, and we're going to go file that on uh, Monday and right. start this process or, or Tuesday, depending on, on when we can get into town again. But, uh, yeah, we're going to try this again, and this time try to uh, do it the right way, you know, file our own claim uh, for, with our own court instead it's of filing nothing. it into theirs. Right. It, it, like I say to people, there's no definitive right way, wrong way. But it, it's more of a, a, like to me, it's more like, are you competent? This is a competent way. You could do it the legal way. You could do it the law way. You could do it the admiralty and, and, and divine comedy way or divine ministry way. Whatever you guys want to do, that's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a different style. You know, but this is the style that we are fortunate enough to have in this nation that will work. And I'll behalf because somebody was smart enough a couple of hundred years ago to say, hey, you know what? Let's make it this way in this country. 
And like I said, to, when I said to the U.S. Marshals, I said, look, eventually all my common law nonsense that I'm teaching everybody is going to get thrown away. And we're going to go into a code world. It's going to go into a police state, and everything is going to be under a code. And there's just going to be people who are going to take this over into a nanny state and then tell me what's best for me to eat. And it's going to be according to a code. And no, no, and the jury will be just told, you have to do what the code says. Regardless of what the jury believes, you're going to have to do what the code says because it's going to be a code world. And that's the law that everybody in society consented to because you elected politicians and those people went and wrote the laws for you, which bind you into those contracts because they're your lawyers. Since you're too busy doing whatever you're doing, you're allowing representatives to bind you into contracts with the rest of society because you don't want to do it yourself. So you trust people to go be your attorney, to be a legislator or your congressman or, you know, your minister of, uh, you know, whatever, you guess, you know, elect up there. And, uh, and there you go. And that's how you get the code world going. Right. Now, Carl, do you think uh, in our case, that it would be more beneficial to go just before a, a judge or to request a jury because you know, we, the, the judges don't seem to like us very much, so we don't know if we want to place our trust in, in just a, a man in a black robe. Oh, no, believe it or not, I really uh, no, because he knows he knows the law. He knows the law a lot better than a jury does, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, and uh, he knows that he's going to make himself liable. Like I said, when you talk to him, you've got to make sure. Like I said, I forgot who I was listening to not too long ago. They said, uh, like, the prosecutor called the judge by his first name, and then he tried to call up the, the, the guy in a black robe by his first name, and the judge went bananas. So what's funny is if you talk to the, if you write to the man in a black robe or talk to the man in a black robe in his first name, you're making him personally liable to you. If you call him your honorable majesty, whatever you guys call these guys, up in Canada, your magistrate or whatever you guys call these folks, um, you're basically letting him hide behind a rope. And then he's not going to be liable for anything. You say, hey, Bill. You're like, what? Bill, your name's Bill, right? Yeah, okay. Well, did, it, did you witness anybody coming in here today, Bill? Uh, well, you can refer to me as magistrate. It's like, okay, so Bill the magistrate. Yeah, okay, Bill the magistrate. Okay, Bill the man, Bill the magistrate. Okay, but you do know you're a man, right? And he'll say, well, uh, absolutely. I said, well, okay. Well, then it's magistrate it is, as long as you realize that you're a man and you're, you know, you're, you're in the capacity of a man right now. Right. I'm, lo I'm looking at you as another man. I said, well, don't look at me as a man. Look at me as a magistrate. I'm not going to do that because this is common law. If you have anything to say in a common law court, only a man can speak in a common law court. If you have anything to put on the record, you have to do it as a man, not as an actor, not as a representative. I'm holding to you if you want to put something on this record. If you want to open your mouth and say something, you, the only person that's going to be able to put something on a record is a man. See what I'm saying? Like I said, it's like when you press a record, if you're Elvis Presley, Elvis Presley can't let his lawyer go into the recording studio to deck the records and press a record for him. That's right. It's ridiculous. It's not an Elvis Presley record. It's a lawyer record. Well, see, like I said, I hope like this this kind of stuff is starting to make it calm people down a little bit when I talk. You know, I try to explain things extremely simple. I can't imagine any simpler than I, I explain it to you folks. So what's great is you've got an exhibit now that nobody made a claim on that date. So you gave them fair warning. You gave them notice. You gave everybody the opportunity to, like, you know, to make, uh, their, claim. make their claim. And they did it. So that's great. So you really don't have to wait for 21 days for anybody to answer because you just said, hey, you know what? I want it. I want it now. You could basically say Monday if you write it like that. You could basically say, hey, I want the return of the property now since uh, Judge Bob. No, don't say Judge Bob. Say Bob, the man who sits in the capacity of the, the robed one that day or whatever you call him up there, the magistrate. What do you guys call him, the magistrate? There are magistrates here, yeah. Yeah, okay. Say, so, you know, Bob, you know, you know, uh, the man sitting in the capacity of a magistrate witnessed firsthand that nobody brought a claim as ordered on, you know, C Exhibit A. I demand the property be returned immediately, post haste, and if uh, anybody interferes with the, the return of property, I'm going to charge that person $10,000 a day until the property is returned. There you go. That's a nice, easy, simple claim. So good thing I said it, record it, and now go back and listen to it because I go say it again. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just don't know how not I, – I, like I said, because I said it again, I probably mix the words up a little bit, and I'd really confuse you poor guys. I'd probably add something that takes them away, so better, it's better sure to go with what's in your gut and what's in your heart and just say it, because you're the one who's going to have to keep repeating it in open court, not me. So kind of have the idea of where I'm going, and then just twist a little bit if you have to, but try to make it as simple and as plain as just what I just did. I did not use one legalese word. I did not use one language other than plain, simple English that every jury person who's going to be seated will understand. I didn't use any Latin legalese. I didn't use, you know, Spanish. I didn't use any tricky phrases. I didn't use anything fancy. It's common, one syllable, two syllable words, and I'm done. And it really drives them bananas because they can't answer it. There's nothing to say. They're like, well, that was pretty simple. <laughs> what are we going to do? Well, how can we tell them no? You better have a damn good reason why we're telling them no, because I can't think of one. Yep. yep. See what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Pretty scary. <laughs> <laughs> so so scary. It's just so simple. Yeah, because like I said, it really freaks people out, because you can't believe the emails I'm getting. It's like, where am I losing you, folks? I can't, I can't imagine any simpler. And people try to keep using this fancy stuff that they... They want to be a lawyer because I guess like, well, you've, how long have you guys been doing this? Just the four months? Or have you been like involved with this stuff for years? Well, uh, just th this particular uh, portion of, of the law we've been in for just the last, since this has happened, the last four and a half months, but we were studying a lot about uh, government and how uh, the, the, the laws technically are, are, like the codes and statutes are not what's supposed to be law. We've kind of been into that for a few, for a couple of years, about a year oh, or two now. The, so. Just just enough to just totally mess up your brains, just to totally confuse the bejesus out of you, right? Yeah. <laughs> so like I said, do you understand like if I had a teenage kid and I just explained to him this how to do law, how much simpler his life would basically be if he just listened to me for like an hour? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what happened with me and my mom. My mom was an IRS agent, and I was carrying up groceries for her, and she wanted me to go outside and fix a car. So then we just got to a discussion on the way up the stairs into the kitchen across the living room. She basically explained to me everything about the IRS and the government by the time – we got to the front door at the time I got to the kitchen. She opened up the IRS book. She told me to read the front cover. She said, what do you see in the inside cover? Welcome to the IRS 1040 Easy Form. This is a voluntary compliance system. She said, what part of voluntary don't you understand? And then she just closed the book and said, no, Mom, I really want to know. Because I, 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 taxes, what pay taxes? She said, you believe you have to pay taxes? Yes. She said, let me try this again. You believe you have to pay taxes? Like, oh, well, yeah. She said, okay, let me try this. You believe in a tooth fairy? Well, uh, no. She said, but you used to, right? You used to take a buck when I put it on your pillow? So I go, cool. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you don't, right? Yeah, okay. You believed in Santa Claus at one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't believe him no more, do you? Well, no, not really. No, you don't, right? No, okay, no. Okay, good. You believe you have to pay the uh, IRS? Yes. She said, okay, now watch this. You believe in Tooth Fairy? No. You believe in Santa Claus? No. You believe in IRS? No. She said, go out there and fix my car. That's all you need to know. <laughs> and that's what, the way I've been living now since 1987. She was boom, 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 done. I could talk to you folks on the Internet for days and weeks and months on it, and I'm still not going to make you understand as simply as my mom did. She's like, look, you go fix my car, I'm going to go fix dinner. You do your job so I can do mine. That's right. And boom, 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 we're done. Yeah, and, uh, our problem is, uh, for the most part, most of us have been, you know, we've been taught our whole lives that, all this stuff is complicated, and leave it to the people who know what they're doing. Uh, right, because what I'm, what, what I'm saying is I could tell these people like a broken record how to do it, and they're just uh, in total fear, and they don't really know, should they trust me? So like I said, I trusted my mom, you know, oh, you said, well, call, come on, she had such high clearance in, you know, the federal government, she, she, she was one of the best collectors for, the, you know, the IRS in New York City, at, like at all time, you know, because she was a sweet lady. And she was, she, she was like me. She was, she was a sharp lady. But she wasn't stupid, and she was gorgeous. So it really was easy for her to make settlements. You know, because yeah. she'd say, if you don't make a settlement with a cute little me, you know, my boss Bubba, you know, he's in a bad mood this day, so you sure you don't want to work with me? Because, you know, I've got to deal with you. So believe me, my mom had so many completion rates, it was, it was scary. You know, just like if I was doing it, I'd have so many completion rates with people like, come on, work with me on this. Let me get you out of here. You know, don't you want to get back and do something else good? You know what? Let's just make it, how, you know, how much can you handle? Blah, blah, blah. And make it pain, as painless as possible, you know, and just get on with your lives. 
you know, like I said to you, if they want you to fill out their forms, hey, you know what? You got to consent a little bit. You got to give up a little bit because they don't want to make it seem like this is going to be a runaway freight train. That all you have to do is one paragraph, one sentence, two sentence done, and they're like, um, holy cow! If everybody figures out it's, it's as simple as this. How are we going to hold the floodgate back? We're going to have to give these people as hard a time as humanly possible and try to find a loophole. And, you know, like they're all scrambling. The guys in the black robes, the clerks, and the social service—they're all scrambling. And how to try to interfere with your ability to hold court. They are doing everything in their power to mess with you. There are. You don't want to lose control of the court. And you're going to, you're going to take over control of the court. Like I, I could walk in and take control of the court in like two seconds and it's scary. They don't realize what I did. And then by the time they realize what I did, they're like, oh my God, this guy's got the court. You know, it's funny. <laughs> so like I said, if you can walk in there, if you have to actually make a physical appearance, I'm telling you, all your paperwork, eh, 5%, 10%, they really don't care. They'll read it. Just make it a little short sentence. It doesn't really matter. Because if you can't hold court, all the paperwork you did was for naught. You're wasting your time. Right. I don't care how much you study. I don't care how much you do. Like I said, my mom told me, very simple with the IRS, good. I, I, man, anybody want to come take me in and, and, and go around around with me with their, their, yeah. under their little system, under their little beliefs? Oh, I'll say, okay. Boom, 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 boom. I was like, uh, there you go. Now, what do you say? I say, well, we can't say because we're representatives and we're not Mr. or Mrs. IRS. That's right. When you get Mr. or Mrs. IRS here to make a claim that I cause them the direct source of their harm, that I'm the direct source of the loss of their income, that I, they include damages, financial damages, financial loss due to my acts, I will be more than glad to compensate Mr. or Mrs. IRS who shows up. Until that day. I'm going to let you uh, go off with like a warning. Don't bother me again. I'll uh, dismiss this without prejudice. If Mr. and Mrs. IRS somehow magically appears with a properly submitted claim to court, my court, we'll be more than glad to entertain any claims and we'll be more than glad to compensate them for my wrongdoing. That's it. I'm done. There's nothing they could do because we're not in France yet. 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 One day, my stuff is going to be dribbled. They're going to say, oh, listen, this crazy guy in this old talk show. Oh, remember that? Oh, that guy's so funny. He's like Soupy Sales. You know, he's like Don Rickles. Listen to this guy talk about common law. Oh, he's so funny. <laughs> I'm serious. Our kids are going to be doing that one day if people don't wise up and realize how simple this is. He gets caught up in this crazy loophole. And it is this loop that the attorney's got us in. Because that's how they control you. If you never hold court, you never got control. It's always under their control. It's always their court. Simple. This stuff is magically simple. Thank God this thing is being recorded because I really think this is going to help a lot of people. And thanks a lot, Jesse. Because uh, are you feeling a little bit better, a little different? I mean, how are you feeling as the days are going on? I, I feel better. I mean, we have <laughs> we have our moments because uh, we did uh, receive the other day uh, some information uh, that they were the social services are trying to. Uh, really bury us and take the kids away for good and terminate our parental rights and the whole nine. So, uh, well, the good thing about one good thing I know about TPRs, the termination of parental rights, you can demand a trial by jury in this country, in this nation. Now, I don't know what it is in Canada, but if they even have to play by their own rules, man, that's sweet. Yeah. So you could find out. You could find out, like, just uh, make a couple phone calls. Don't say your name is Jesse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, hey, you know what? I'm just wondering, you know, talk to somebody in another county or something like that. Ask them, you know. Say, hey, you know what? It actually gets down to a trial. See, because that's going to be a trial. All this other nonsense is a hearing. Yeah. I went I went to two TPR trials. And both times when I went to trial, you know what the state did? What's that? They said they did not want to prosecute at this time. They wanted it dismissed without prejudice so they could come back and try me again some other time. But at this time, they do not wish to terminate my parental rights. So you understand how beyond upset we were because we wanted to be done. We were like, please take us to trial. Do with us. Let's do this. Let's get the jury. Let's get it on. And as soon as they realized, now is the trial. Now Carl's got the chance to put us up on a witness stand. Now Carl's got the right to do this, this, and this. Now Carl's got all kinds of rights because this is a trial. At hearings, it's a Mickey Mouse. Hearings are totally nonsense. So if you want to say, good. You, you see, see, you got to get this different attitude, and you women got to get this that, that different attitude like I did. See, because I was like, when do we have, like, a trial? 
They're like, well, let's determination for our rights. Oh, let's do it today. Can we do it today? And they're like, no, that's supposed to scare the bejesus out of you. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's do this now. And they're like, no, 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 no. All the parents avoid it, and it's like the plague, and they're scared shit. No, 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 no. You're saying there's something called a, a termination for rights, and it's a trial, not a hearing? Oh, let's, can I put them on a witness stand? Yeah, cool. Oh, let's do this. And like, no, 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 you know, that we usually have to work with you like 16 months or two years before we actually terminate. No, 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 terminate my trial rights now. Let's get the trial on now. Do it. Let's do this. And I was freaking them out. Because that's the only time where, like I said, if I could have a trial by jury, and I, when, when do I get to cross-examine these clowns? When do I get to put them on a witness stand? Well, that doesn't happen until the trial. Well, when does the trial happen? Well, first we go through all these, you know, adjudication hearings, and we, we try to see where the placement hearings, and then we try to do, a, you know, a dependency deposition, a dis- dispositional hearings. I don't know if you have, guys have a dispositional hearing up there, do you? Uh, no, just the, the regular hearings to see who's getting their counsel, if they have their counsel, and then uh, the pretrial conference, which is if what you, we just had. If you do hear something called dispositional hearing, it's just saying, what position are we in? It's like a preliminary hearing. That's all dispositional is. Hmm, okay. So do, do, you, do you guys use a fancy word or you just call it a preliminary hearing? Is that what you guys call it? We call them uh, G hearings. Okay, a G hearing? Yeah. For, like a G? Yeah, to, to see everyone's position. Okay, well, down here they call them dis- dispositional hearings. So I'm, I'm so I was so tired of even thinking about another hearing. It's like, when do I finally get those clowns upon a witness stand? Well, not until the trial. Make the trial now. <laughs> <laughs> just a dispositional hearing. We just want to see how the kids are. In- put it, put that. Let's get it on. Everybody's here. Let's do this. It's like, no, they need time to prepare their case. What case? Let them get it on. Let's. I'm all in. You know, like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. You're all, I'm all, I'm all in. Let's do this. Terminate my final rights right now, man. Let's get this on. Because if it's under your silly administrative things, I could take this over into my court. So you just get it on in your administrative court. Let's get this on. I said, if I lose, I don't give a rat's ass. I'm going to take it over to a common law court. I don't care. I'm going to get a damn jury. Let's get this on. And they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, uh, and like I said, both termination and parental rights uh, hearings, I wonder if I got the paperwork for that. And I'll make it available. I'll show you guys that they, uh, the state withdrew their claim or their 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 their, their, uh, uh, their willingness to prosecute at this time. They said, "Well, we don't want to prosecute them at this time." You know, they're working with us. They said, "Work with you? We, f you! How many times did I say f you? She's not working with you. I'm not working with you. F you! We're not working with you. We're never going to work with you. F you! Well, we don't want to prosecute them at this time. We see they're making efforts. Efforts of what? Telling you f you?" <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, you know. The judge was like, "This is crazy." I mean, the second time, man, I exploded, man, in court when they said that they're not prosecuting at this time, because I really didn't know the rules of administrative compared to common law. I thought I was in common law. I could have sworn I was, but like you guys did, you make a couple of simple mistakes, and boom. You know, you just said something wrong the wrong way. Poof! I lost my court. I was like, "Hey, I thought I had my court." And then I go back and I said, oh, my God, I did use one of their codes, didn't I? Oh, my Jesus, Lord. I did use code like 36, one point, like 5, 1, subsection E. Oh, geez, I did say that in court, didn't I? And I lost my court because I didn't know. It took me years to realize, oh, my God, don't ever use this stuff other than as an exhibit. Because like I said to people, everybody laughed because they changed the code on me. And I was actually describing something really bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> Like laughing, so what's so funny? <laughs> and then that's like, uh, yeah, I guess you didn't get the memo. Alabama changed their codes uh, January first, and now it's like June. I guess you didn't get the upgrade in your code book. It's like, well, no, my code book was like, I don't know, written and it's in the library. I don't know, five, ten years. I don't know. So part of me, they they changed the codes just because they knew a clown like me was writing briefs according to their codes. So they're like, oh, let's change this code a little bit. So when he says this, it sounds really ridiculous. <laughs> Because I was slamming codes at him. I mean, I was walking around like these guys you hear on these, on these shows, and he like being said it was. Being able to whip out codes. Whoa, whoa, whip out this. Whip out this. Section 31. Section 33. Of the, you know, section 1 of the Canadian chart. You know, all of the Oh, no, this is ridiculous. I was good. But it was ridiculous. Because they changed the code. On, and they just specifically did it to me. And I went back and I looked up and on the internet. Oh, you clowns. This is exactly when I was submitting this. Oh, these people are smart. So everything that I wrote was thrown out the window. Yeah. Because it was the wrong freaking... I was trying to use their words instead of using mine. So like I said, thank God I went through 28 hearings and two trials. 
because it really made me learn to stop using that nonsense. And that's what the judge actually called me. I actually went around and around like I had the, like you were seeing when the judge was pretty nice to you guys, whatever. I was running around, I was going around and around with this judge because he let me talk, which was ridiculous. He let me talk for about seven hours, which no dad gets to talk for seven hours. He said, you got the floor. Convince me. The sun's not going to come up tomorrow. Go ahead and do it. Prove a negative. You know, so I was like, yeah, thanks, buddy. So I tried, and after a while, he just gave mercy on me. He's like, come up here, and he gave me his business card. He said, look, let me just pass final judgment. Meet me out in the hallway. I'll show you how to beat the state, and I'll show you how to return my ruling. And um, he says, oh, and you know what? You, the biggest favor you could do for yourself? Never use this damn case file number ever again. He's like, what? I said, but this is the case, and the kid is on this case. I said, don't. Do Man, I went around and around for this guy for about 15, 20 minutes. Easy. Say, but I need this case. I need this. He says, it's not your case. So what do you think I get adamant with you people? Because I was the clown yelling at the judge. But it is my case. And he's like, it's not your case. My kids are like, no, it's not your case. Judge. He's like, stop call. But judge. And he said, call, file another. But judge. It's like, we went around and around. It was so funny. He was like, oh, my God. I'm going to have to hit this guy in the head with a hammer. It's not your case. But my name's on it. It's not yours. And, and man, he he couldn't explain too much detail because the state attorney general was sitting right on the other side of me. He would say, hey, judge, you know, <laughs> you're not supposed to tell this guy all this, you know, come on. You know, tell him a little bit, that's fine, but, you know, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he can't tell him nothing. away all the secrets. Yeah, just tell him, just warn him, don't use this case again. Don't come back to family court and don't use this case again. Case number again. I say, okay, well, what court do I take it? He said, take it into any court, district court. I don't care, but don't come back here. I was like, but that's what it says, stop. You know, it's so funny. <laughs> Imagine this poor guy trying to help me, and it's like me trying to help you guys. I'm like, stop. You know, I'm playing what he did to me. So yeah. that's why I'm too upset, because I see what you guys are looking at. Yeah. You got a couple of years of getting your brains messed up by watching the silly stuff on YouTube. And uh, fortunately, YouTube wasn't really around back in 2001, so I really didn't get my brain messed up as bad as you guys are. But now, yeah. you're, vis now you're visually getting it. I used to just hear this stuff on the radio. Now you guys are hearing it and seeing it visually, so it's really getting pushed down your brains. Right. It's embedded. Now you could actually remember seeing a guy in an overhead projector and pointing to the Section 1 of the Canadian, oh, now Section 33, and oh, let's, oh, my God. <laughs> now, Carl, they have their trial for this, uh, not this coming week, but next week, five days. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're not sure, like we're going to be putting, trying to put in our claim again this week. When we put in our claim, should this kind of stop their trial, put it on hold until our claim is heard? You, make, you say you since there's a, we're, all the parties are going to be uh, convening on that claim on that day for that hearing, well, we're going to have my claim heard at the same time because we'll uh, try to limit the, the expenditure of county resources or Providence resources and uh, Province resources, whatever you folks call it up there. Are you in a county or province? What do you guys call it? Wait, a district? What do you guys call it? It's a province. Okay. Well, then you say you say I'm trying to, uh, you know, you know, mitigate, you know, any kind of, uh, you know, wasteful of, uh, you know, court facilities. While we're all going to be here, we're going to have our trial for the return of property the same time. And for comp you could you could actually make a kind of claim for compensation at that time as well, because that's the that's the or else part of the claim. Because nobody's really going to take your claim serious unless you throw it all else in there. Like I told you before, don't put a compensation thing at this time. Get your kids back. Right. They're not going to take you serious. You say, you know what? Maybe they'll take a dollar amount serious. Because that's what a Department of Justice man told my whole family. Because I said to them, they said, well, how much are you going to sue for? I said, I don't know, what, like a dollar? He says, no, they're not going to take you serious. They're going to give you a dollar. And he said, no, don't do that. He said, you better put a big number in there and make it a whopper. He said, they're not going to take you serious. So don't make too ridiculous a whop. Just say, I want $10,000 a day, something like that. I'm not telling you that's what I, you know, don't, you know, literally say, do what I say, but don't make it, like, ridiculous, like a million dollars a day. Make right. it just make it just enough that if you don't mow your lawn, the Providence instance is going to charge you $1,000 a day until you mow your lawn. Right. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, well, hey, you charge us $1,000 a day if we don't mow a lawn. I want $10,000 a day or $4,000 a day for each kid. So you know, basically, I'm, our claim is, you know, we want our property back now or else we want this we a month hold, until it's returned. Right. If I'm holding my property, and you could use the word like full bracket, naked possession, without rights, that's all it means. But you don't you don't put naked possession on it because that's a legalese word. Okay. You, can see, you can say holding possession, you can put naked. 
a full corner so that way they don't read legalese on that document. To say naked possession of my property, I'm going to demand, you know, a thousand dollars for each, you know, piece of property that's being held by four different individuals or one individual holding all four, four properties or you know, how many people decide to scatter? I'm going to actually go after those people who are holding my child in their possession, my property in their possession. Okay, so we're basically going to put in our claim and, and we'll say, you know, for the sake of of, of uh, not wasting resources, we'll have our trial in the same time that they want to have their trial, but we're going to have ours heard first, basically. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I'd find a, if you say foster care parent X, Y, and Z, or foster care parent John Doe, or foster care parent Jane Doe. If you don't know the foster care parent's family that they're holding in, say so I'm going to charge the family, uh, you know, $10,000 a day until I return the child to my custody. You could go out to the foster care parents too. They could definitely be sued. So we could put them all on there, uh, basically, the, the, the social workers, oh. the foster parents, that all those people we could put on the claim. That's good news. Yeah, so like I said, we could work on a little bit on the compensation thing if you want a little bit. But like I said, I've, or I've read in like the Alabama Code, I think it's under Title 36, like Section 1, Section 5E, where it basically says that a, uh, foster care parents can also be sued and can be held liable. And that the risk management of the uh, General Liability Trust Fund sets up an insurance policy for when a foster care parent does something wrong to somebody's child. So, like I said, you don't almost want to make your kids the, like uh, lepers that nobody wants to touch your kids at a foster care home. <laughs> yeah, you're, basically. You're going to be afraid to uh, accept them in. Regardless that the judge gave them an order that they could walk off with your kids. It's like I said, it's like everybody knows it's like that German thing. Just because they, uh, Hitler made an order that they could kill all the Jews, the guys who killed all the Jews actually died after World War II. Yeah. 